welcome back to our garden here in the very windy southwest of Ireland and I have been away for a few weeks I was visiting my family and I haven't put out any updates on the garden and um, I missed you and the garden has definitely missed me the only things that are growing are weeds they are just everywhere it's been so abundant <laughs> and a lot of the other crops then have failed so i thought i'd get you an update and show you how the garden is bearing i haven't done a thing since i came back and i know that it's time now to really roll my sleeves up and catch up because uh, missing a couple of weeks in the garden um, sort of end of august is fairly detrimental and it's been sort of mild but it's been still quite wet the, the weather has been continuing to be as wet as july nearly was so i'll um, i'll show you around and we'll see what is growing i don't know do you see anything down here oh my goodness the weeds are growing through the planters aren't they Ah, they are. They are rosy. Come on, Rosie. Come on, have a look what's down here. Rosie, chuk chuk. So one of the biggest successful plants for this season has been the calendula and I can't even take any credit for it. I didn't sow it. Well, I originally sowed it always up there in the fruit tree guild, but it has self sown itself always here and every bit of this planter is full of it. And it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, it needs a lot of dead hitting, but also every bit of the brassicas that would have been in that inside this um, planter under the hoops is filled with it and the brassicas that are inside of it are have totally failed. Under this butterfly netting I can just see two plants that have survived. There's a little Brussels sprouts there and another one here which is a bit taller but again something has been eating it. Huh? See just like that just climb through it. So earlier in the season when I started to see the the bees actually on the borage here i was really panicky and i was really worried that they'll be trapped there and they can't get the find their way through it but no there's been absolutely no bother so that has been the biggest joy obviously of these self-sown um, borages anywhere uh, because they're such good um, attractors for uh, bees and because they're full of nectar so yeah so even though all the brassica has failed under there, uh, the borage did very, very well. And it's just for next season. I do have to be better at it. I do have to um, get a better planting plan or just mind the areas. Moving towards the apple tree guilds here then. Obviously, I have one apple tree here where I've collected the fruit already. Uh, stunning red discovery variety and this would have been an early dessert apple so end of august is usually when it is ready and there was so many delicious apples on it
as this one is James Grieve and this isn't going to be ready for another month probably but the apples are getting so big and obviously taking on this more typical um, color so see now again the tree what I was saying about before in my previous videos that two really even one is plenty there's one here there probably was two because I can, actually I can see a good few apples that the wind has knocked down we had um, a storm coming through again a few weeks back uh, so two is absolute maximum but somehow I missed this one <laughs> a fairly obvious one but uh, there's three there and they're so tightly packed so they, they just won't have that much space there to swell to swell up and get uh, to the maximum size as possible but yeah aren't they stunning now the fennel here has continuously grown I can't even reach it so I would say it's well over seven feet uh, tall and that's going to come out uh, for next year it's just too too big I can't deal with it it's blocking every bit of the walkway now as well because of its size it has sort of lopsided itself away from the prevailing winds The bean and pea frames are were fine. Obviously, the Calvadon Wonder peas they've gone well over now. Wasn't anybody here to eat them, so they'll be just seed now for next year, really. But uh, the runner beans they've really favoured this wet and cool uh, weather. For the pumpkins, there's one vine here from the Crown Prince. There's the second one starting from here and goes to this direction. So it's coming back now from this side again, away from the bean and pea frame. Now there's fruits on them. Obviously I see one big one there. This is defective. That's not a nice looking one. There's one rotten one here. One that I don't think is going to make it. There's another one here, another one coming, and another one coming. So it's, I think it was just too wet for them in July. They were very happy to grow. And then the slugs got to them. So I'm not sure if they will have enough time now at all to grow any further. Um, and I probably should be taking off the tip of this vine now at some point. Um, to make sure that it doesn't put any more energy into growing the vine but to actually maturing the pumpkin so it could be just I'd have to take the rest of it off to make sure that this one gets enough energy. Plenty of beetroot. There's some of it I'm sure has gone over as well but there's plenty there and that's all the rockers it looks horrible <laughs> at the very end of the season there's plenty of the little pods on it now these thornless blackberries are actually delicious now oh they're really sweet and there's plenty of them dropped onto the ground as well because they're nearly overripe But they're delicious they're very nice and I wasn't that impressed by them last season I'm happy with them now they're just in the wrong place though I do need to dig this one out and find a better location for it I thought I thought I could train it enough to go one direction but I can't it's, it's just it's too vigorous and um, it needs to be sort of espaliered out so I just need to find a bigger space for it it's the other vine of the crown prince and exactly the same thing has happened the very first set of fruits 
fabric. They're all just totally rotted away. And this isn't going to happen either. But then obviously it's, it's well settled now, so it's happy in its location. It's just a witness and there's two, three forming and it's actually climbing itself now onto this butterfly netting here. So it took a while to settle, but it's happy. So I think I'm just going to chance it and let these uh, fruit ripen as much as possible. I, I really don't have any um, expectations now out of them anymore. It's so yeah, I think it's probably too late in the season for them to start putting on the proper weight it needs because like crown prince can be quite a nice size of a, a pumpkin. So yeah, I'm not really holding out too much hope. So look at these beautiful flowers. Aren't they just gorgeous? <laughs> and that should be all food. Well, it's been food for butterflies and, and bees. Look, there they are. Yeah. Look, at least they're good for something. Um, but yeah, no, they're fully, like, they are growing through the netting. This just, um, that will teach you now going off on holidays. <laughs> look, this was, what was this? Oh yeah, look at that. Nice, fine size of a turnip there. All going to seed. Um, itsy bitty Brussels sprouts. Absolutely ridiculous size. Butterflies have been able to get through the barrier as well and I'm sure it's just through the, the leaves that were twitching the actual netting. Um, there's a bit of Brussels sprouts growing in here but the better ones are actually on the other side, on that side especially. A couple of nice Brussels sprouts growing inside here. But that's about it. Like it's... Out of all the brassicas that I had planted um, and so obviously the seeds sown and everything, the Brussels sprouts were the ones that I was going to be I was going to have the highest expectations for because I had so many of them and I want to make sure we have an abundance of them. It, that would take us through even let's say January um, into February, not just the Christmas, but um, I don't think it's going to happen now anymore. Now this is the other pumpkin growing area so I would have the sweet corn here as well and I have two Amish uh, pumpkins in here. And one vine going this way and the other one actually going both directions actually. A little bit in here and then most of it running the other way. But exactly the same thing. A lot of the very um, early, the first sets of fruit uh, have all just rotted away. And there's no hope of the new ones, I'd say, maturing again. So the pumpkins have been an absolute disaster for this year. Just disaster. And obviously I didn't even get summer squashes, so. A total disaster. It has been, Baba. It has been. Now for the sweet corn, I do have hopes for. Um, there are some very nice brown silks there but I'm going to let them mature more who's hiding under there yeah ear weeks there's so many ear weeks everywhere but at least nobody has been at them Except I know there'll be earwigs in between the leaves and everything. But, um... So coming to the planters here, the butternut squash, nothing happening from that. This is still empty, that's where the garlic used to be. Uh, garlic used to be still empty, there's a couple of carrots popping up from there. Um, parsnip, corn for seed. 
sweet actually um starting to put out a few more new leaves this is a hybrid I'm not sure how it's going to taste maybe it's gone too hard I'm um, going to harvest one of them uh, for tonight's dinner for sure so I'm going to do a little harvest as well at the end and then this one has been totally decimated as I said before this was never covered a bar <laughs> yeah come on Penty yeah man um, so look what have the caterpillars done absolutely shocking look they're all over us I, I don't know if it's even worth to save them or just harvest what's there and just leave the planter then for something else maybe that's a better idea But this has been a festivity for them. Looking at the planters here, look at this fine chard. <laughs> totally gone to seed. You wouldn't even know this is something edible. Um, it just looks like a weed. It truly does. So this has actually then here, the spaghetti squash has been the only successful one that it's going at the right pace um, and that's a fine size now this is a nice size uh, spaghetti, spaghetti squash and I grew it last year as well and it also did uh, nicely for me but I'm just thinking in case this planter here is much more sheltered from the winds and rain that we had it drains better in here and obviously the vine actually has elevated itself as well so it's not sitting on the ground like the fruit obviously now has grown but originally it would have been up here and then it stretches itself out and it's still actually resting on its own stem um, so I'm just thinking this is probably the only reason why it's been successful and the others haven't. And even the lettuce um, actually has not grown at all. It's just bizarre. So bizarre. It's exactly the same size as it was three weeks ago. So out of all the different pumpkins I had, I'd probably just get one fruit out of them. Which is pity because we do love pumpkin. Well, I like pumpkin. I love pumpkin. Now the carrots haven't been minding any of this water weather we've been getting, except um, it is making the, the flavour a little bit more watery as well. But um, I just picked a couple of them now straight from the planter here. The smell is good though, um, just for tonight's dinner. And let's head to the greenhouse and we'll see what's growing in there. Huh. Would you like that, Coco? Would you like that? Oh, yes. Tasty? Is it good? Come on, Rosie. Come on. Mr. Rosie, too. Now the greenhouse has an utter abundance of tomatoes at the moment, which is just wonderful. 
Now there's plenty of blight in here as well, but it's something that we've been we've been really keeping an eye on it. Now probably the worst effect that I still I can see the apricot salix where it's traveling a bit into the stem of the plants now. But otherwise, on this side, on one of the lucky leprechauns, one of the plants has to come out. And again, on this side, it, I can see it's gone into the stem. It's actually really hard to tell the difference between the Lucky Leprechaun and Moneymaker as they are. So this is the Lucky Leprechaun. Nice amount of fruit, really abundant. But it's way um, more compact plant, so that's literally where it finishes. As the Moneymaker, which is behind there, see the longer truss of fruit just keeps going and going and going and going. And they've been topped off and they still want to grow and there's blight affected leaves everywhere now this is the lucky leprechaun that has the blight now always in the stem as well so this is the plant that's going to come out i'm not even going to take the fruit off it i don't want them to be contaminated i don't want to send the spores off uh, to every direction at the moment as i'm filming here i'm going to take this down very very carefully and there's more money maker here but if i'm but if I'm looking at them side by side, so this is the money maker. And again, how I know is because how tall this plant is, there's plenty of uh, green fruit on it still. But then beside it is the lucky leprechaun. And side by side, even the fruit look very similar in the shape. Um, so it would be interesting to know how the taste is um, how different do they taste? And if I get, if I even get one of the money makers as a taster, mm, that's still a bit too firm. Oh, this one, yeah, this one. I try to remember now that this is the money maker tester. And what I collected there was the apricot salix and then a lot of cherry tomatoes. This is what we're eating literally daily. This amount of it is probably going to do us about two days. And there's plenty more to come. But once you just keep harvesting from the top down, then they'll ripen. I really want to get a taste of the San Marzano as well. I wonder if they are ripe. At least one of them is ripe. Yeah. So these are much more elongated fruit. There. Like these actually look way more typical of your Italian cooking tomato. This long shape. So I have two of them as well. So two San Marzano and one money maker. Get them into that corner. And then the cherry tomatoes and all the Irish heritage, lucky leprechaun, and then the apricot salix. That wouldn't be a proper garden update if I wouldn't um, harvest at least one bucket of the Charlotte potatoes. I'm going to improvise today because I think the wheelbarrow is on the other side of the garden. And I just don't have the time for, to go and get it. So let me just open it into here. 
So that is number six. Oh, lovely. As I say, whenever I see the worms, I know that those buckets are doing well. And the last one did really well for us. So this is totally empty. Number six. And I see earthworms in it. Yeah, plenty of them. Ah, again, I didn't get. Where am I going to put them into again now? So this was today's update, little update, just to let you know I'm back, holidays are over, back to the gardening and back to the harvests and showing you what's growing. So obviously loads of tomatoes here now, sweet million, I tried one of the money maker because there isn't enough of them uh, really ripe yet, I tried two of the San Marzanos, then this is the Lucky Leprechaun, and then the Apricot Salix, and obviously as you see from the carrot, the Sweet or Rotabaga, and the Charlotte Potatoes. There is so much for the three of us, there will be definitely leftovers, so like you don't need to have these massive bumper harvests, which you just have to worry about after. So hopefully if you can tip away with these little bits, I like it, there's plenty there for us to eat. Um, that's what you'd want. But yeah, then we'll have more, I suppose, September sowings to be doing and plenty more updates. Thanks a million for watching. We'll see you next time.